Hey everyone, this is Dyeworm and today I want to talk about the release date of Pagan Online. That's right, it's leaving early access. It's going to be a full release and I'm very excited. Let's dive into the article and I will give my thoughts along the way. We're tremendously excited to announce that Pagan Online officially launches on August 27, 2019. Along with massive changes in both features and content, so massive that you'll be forgiven for thinking you're playing an entirely different game. These guys don't shy away from bold claims or bold naming conventions. They do, however, deliver on these promises so far. I've been a bit skeptical in the past. I might be later on in this video a little skeptical still, but Madhead is not messing around. The best part is that this is just the beginning for Pagan Online, as the game will continue to develop and grow as an officially released game with regular updates. The game will launch with a price tag of 24.99 euros or 29.99 US dollars, and prices in other regions will also be adjusted according to regional pricing. To me this price tag makes perfect sense, 25 euros seems like a fair price for what you're getting definitely once it is released. It's a bit more expensive than it is currently in my region. But like I said before, I feel this game is currently undervalued quite a bit. There's a list with upcoming content, so for those who've seen the roadmap, it may not contain many new things, but there's a few reveals still. Also, it's a mix of stuff we already have now and stuff that is still coming up. A full story campaign featuring 8 total acts, new zones and maps. And... 2 new bosses. We got 6 acts now, so this is basically all new. Click to move controls and full controller support. These are supposed to come in BFP2, so that is in 2 weeks. Two new playable characters. What's cool about this is that there's some new information about these guys. We have Elden, who is apparently an ice construct with high attack speed, he's nimble, agile and does cold damage that slows and freezes enemies. That's pretty cool. And then we have Hector, and I would just like to point you towards my prediction a couple of videos ago. Taking a bit of a closer look however, the gun seems fairly large, a heavy caliber thing, possibly a blunderbuss or a shotgun. Would be cool if this was some medium range hero with wide angle auto attacks and some skills accordingly. The fire might be a coincidence, but I don't believe in coincidence. So I'm predicting that this dude does some fire damage instead of physical, or at the very least has these modifiers for his skills. It also seems like he is casting the fire. Fabled weapons. Some legendary weapons can be upgraded to fabled status by overcoming pagans online toughest battles. Like these ones. I love this concept however. It creates an additional gameplay loop to the game where you first need to get your hands on the legendary and then complete additional challenges to upgrade those legendaries to fabled weapons. What those fabled weapons are exactly remains to be seen at this moment in time, but I'm pretty sure we're getting some good content out of this. Schools of Magic, ultra rare gear sets that boost stats and provide your hero and their skills with some awesome new looks. The way I see these are an interesting mix of your pretty regular set items in action RPGs and the cosmetic purchases in games like Path of Exile. That game by Grinding Gear Games allows you to purchase special skill effects purely cosmetic for premium currency. Set items we all know and love where collecting multiple pieces of the same set grants you special bonuses. Combining these two concepts in a single item is interesting. First, because this means the devs are deliberately not using this system for potential future income because they're really against pay to win and paying for these items would be exactly that. Second, you might run into a situation where you really like the cosmetic effect that item gives, but maybe you don't like the item itself or the stats. That would be sort of a shame, right? I'm curious if these things are basically going to be best in slots, so this isn't an issue, or if there will be maybe some transmog options to get those cosmetics on other pieces of gear in the future. Revamped crafting and loot drop system that makes drops more valuable, diverse and immediately usable, while recipes become rarer and have bigger impact. This is basically implemented, right? I don't think they will rework this again after BFB1. Crafting will be balanced a bit most likely and of course the new features that are already discussed may have to do with crafting as well, but I think this in itself 
is basically in the game by now. All new skill trees for every character, letting players build and spec out unique heroes by improving, modifying and unlocking entirely new abilities. This is also there for like 70%. Skill trees for the current characters exist and I don't expect too many changes in those specifically, but I might be wrong. Maybe every character gets yet another skill or something? I just feel that this is mostly in place. Six skills per character and the stuff that's there requires a bit of fixing because I found quite a few bugs already while creating builds. I I expect the devs are focusing on that instead of creating yet more skills and abilities. Endgame content that will provide new types of challenges for you to experience while continually evolving your favorite heroes. This remains vague for quite a while now. I'm fine with that. I'm not worried about this really, but I am curious and maybe a little worried just when looking at the current state, which is BFP1. Endgame didn't really change. I mean, there is a bit more variety and don't get me wrong, I love the changes, but we're still killing the same bosses and running the gauntlet. So what's going to change apart from the new item fever, the fabled weapons and the schools of magic? Maybe not much within a month. And depending on the implementation of fabled weapons and schools of magic, maybe that's not necessary either. We can spend a ton of time completing those sets and cool looking gear pieces. And I would be completely fine with that. But more actual endgame content to run, more bosses to kill, just more levels to spend our endgame time in, that would really be appreciated from my end. Because Kevlar is getting a bit boring sometimes, that's all. Conclusion. There's a lot of new content, but I hope devs are also able to fix bugs and performances before this game officially sees the light of day. At that time, the actual reviews come in and there's still a few things they might want to fix before the press and general public gets a crack at this game, so it isn't disqualified at launch, basically. There are the technical issues that could really hurt reviews, for example the co-op lag, the input lag, the loot lag and just general server connectivity that is suboptimal, let's call it that. Also functionally, there is some work to be done with bugged skills for example and crafting to me is just way too expensive and unimpactful currently on top of that add all the new upcoming content that we discussed in this article and that is yet to be implemented and maybe i'm a tiny bit worried about the timelines all that in four weeks it's crazy right because if another hotfix introduces the same amount of issues we had in 0.5.1 that's going to be a big issue, right? If that happens in the BFP3 hotfix, you're having people constantly crashing at launch. Am I being too negative here? I just want this game to do well and to succeed for all new people to have a smooth experience and it should also receive some critical acclaim. It deserves that much, I feel. And after all the work and polish and changes, it would be such a shame if you get negative reviews because of crashes, for example. Also, there's this other game that's releasing. It's not a very popular game at all, only got a few million people that after more than a decade want to trip back to memory lane. I'm one of them, to be honest. To me, this is by far the best game ever made. I'm not kidding. The memories I have while playing this, the first time I experienced that world, it's hard to describe how good I felt. And when I finally killed Illidan for example, after months and months of trying with the same group of people, it was just such a good feeling. When it comes to Pagan Online though, I feel it's a bit of a stretch to see these games as competition. In general, the two audience should really be different enough in order for this to not really matter. That's just my thoughts. Mostly though, I'm not worried. Like I said, Mad Hat Games delivered on their promises so far and this time it's probably not different. And overall, I'm just really pumped to see what's coming up. BFP2 hits in 2 weeks, which means BFP3 should hit in 4 weeks. That's lots and lots of new content in the upcoming months for us to enjoy. Regarding Gamescom and Might and Glory Club, expect 2 more videos. I would like to do a final shout out to Shrouded One, who has been creating these amazing art pieces for developers, community members, and he was even so kind to create me. I'm very flattered, man. Thanks so much. Check out his amazing creation in the hashtag sharing in the Discord on discord.gg slash paganonline. I'm putting out multiple videos per week with the latest news like this one, patch notes discussions, devlog dissections, and guides and tutorials for Pagan Online. So subscribe if you enjoy those. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you soon, bye bye.